yeah so hello everyone uh, welcome to today's video i hope uh, this is going to be the final video on uh, pinbox 7 box through so we are discussing the models and methods and artifacts so we're going to discuss the final set of artifacts artifacts are nothing but your outputs or templates or deliverables or documents which you're going to deliver it as part of a perf uh, project performance domains you take methods and you know, models as an input where you can contextualize all these artifacts methods and models based on your project context you can tailor it so we already discussed top six commonly used artifacts right so today we're going to discuss the rest of it the reports agreements and contracts and other artifacts which will be using uh, which will be a, a very useful and handy for a project manager right so let's begin uh, today's video what is a report okay a report it's a formal record or summary of information right often the reports are provided to the uh, sponsors business owners and pmo kind of people where people are interested in knowing the project status and performance and etc it will help them you know as leadership in decision making and you know, change the way of working and everything prioritizing and everything right so let's look at the different reports possibly you know available for uh, in a project scenarios the first type of report is a quality report quality report talks about the summary of findings in a quality control right it can be a report on testing so there are two kind of reports happening you know one is on quality control one may be on quality assurance right so quality assurance may be talking about more in terms of processes and precision etc and quality control may, may talk about you know findings on testings right uh, number of defects effective defect containment what is that summary of you know all of the test cases has been executed something like that right so finally the report called report might include the recommendations for corrective actions in terms of product in terms of process you know in terms of project as well project performance and etc all right the next report is a risk report risk report you know which is summarizing the information on the project report, project risk actually so individual project risk it will summarize that these are the you know risks available and what is the level of overall project risk you know it is in green you know yellow or red you know you can even talk about overall risk score there are certain methodology can calculate the score of the project as well right so it will give a summary of you know, total risk available you know uh, total risk identified that particular project and what is the you know, impact of it to the project and what is the level of overall score overall risk score for this project the third uh, final report is the status report it's a very common report for you know, any project uh, status report provides a current state of the project it talks about progress since the last report and the forecast for cost and schedule right so where are we on cost and schedule where are we on the quality and all those aspects we talk about from you know last report with, uh, uh, and this report and what is a forecast right so let's see some of the examples this is the sample quality report which you can see that you know it talks about you know quality information verification details evaluation details and everything right and this is an example of uh, a risk report is summary of risks along with the risk rating right impact and probability what is the risk rating right so you can always focus on the red and orange right this is an example of status report for a client X and project Y and what is the status green and yellow, what are the dependencies, what is the objective, what is the schedule, risks and updates. Alright, so it, it even talks about KPAs as well, right? So it's a uh, nice example of a sample of a status report. Alright, so let's get into the next uh, artifact. Next type of artifact is agreements and contracts. What is an agreement? Agreement is an any document or a communication that defines the intention of the parties, right? There may be a buyer and seller. This particular agreement will talk about intention of the each parties. Generally, it takes a form of a contract, right? So contracts are nothing but mutually binding agreement where you know, uh, it obligates seller to provide the product or service and it obligates buyer to pay for it right that's called uh, you know contract where you know one party you know it's uh, sells the service of the product other party buys it pays for it so that's how the agreements and contracts you know uh, works right what are the different type of contracts available in the market right so fixed price contracts where when you have a well defined scope you can go for you know firm fixed price uh, contracts and there are two or three types of uh, FP contracts are there. 
the firm fixed price you know it's a uh, very blatant and uh, you know obvious that you know this is the price of this project and uh, this is the you know value of this contract and you can go with a fixed price plus incentive fee right if the, if the project can completed you know within uh, uh, 10% of uh, uh, time or a 10% ahead of the schedule uh, within the cost you now that may be incentive fee according to that and then another type of fixed price product is the economic price adjustment right you can you know, because raw material prices you know going up ups and down commodity prices going up and down so you need to look at the inflation and other things so fixed price project is going for a longer period of time you know two or three years at a time it's better to go for fpe epa where economic price adjustment will happen so accordingly you can adjust your you know based on the economic prices the macroeconomic and macroeconomic the data you can adjust to a fixed price data the second type of the contract is the cost reimbursable contract but the scope is not well defined you are anticipating some changes a no fixed price may not work for you go for cost uh, no cost reimbursable uh, uh, reimbursable contract and so you do the work and reimburse the cost right, along with the along with the profit right so there are many types are there cost price with award fee cost uh, cost plus with fixed fee cost plus plus intensive fee right so you can go for it right so fixed fee nothing but could be a profit component and uh, award and incentive on top of the profit component right right so the third one third type of contract is the times and materials establishes fixed rate you no know, precise date to the work for you right to tell you that you know uh, what is the rate for a particular skill set or a competency right and then it is perfectly fitting for staff augmentation or subject matter expertise you know? even for adoptive methods where you go for uh, agile methods using scrum uh, time and materials preferred over fixed fixed price because you know in, in agile uh, its scope is flexible actually it is advisable go for tn right the fourth type of contract is the idiq which is uh, indefinite delivery indefinite quantity right provides an indefinite quantity of goods and services right and states the lower and upper limit and within the time period right it tells that within a year we have supplied so much of materials Yeah, this is the lower element. This is an upper element. Generally, is used for you know architectural engineering and information technology engagements, right? So you can go with you know ID IQ. I've never personally I've not seen ID IQ uh, a lot of the times. Other agreements include memorandum of understanding, memorandum of agreement, service level agreement. SL is used in you know production operations you know kind of contracts. SL is being widely used. basic ordering agreement it is for you know uh, it's for getting the prototype kind of scenario or getting the uh, initial understanding about the supplier so you can go for basic ordering agreement if everything goes fine you are happy with the quality then you can go for a main contract right so these are the you know uh, six or seven types of contracts available right this is a uh, sample of a simple contract talks about you know how two business entities are you know uh, coming to picture and what is the terms and condition and uh, it's signed by both the parties right and this is an example of memorandum of understanding so what is the part for all the parties what is the purpose terms of mou responsibilities of agencies other agencies general provinces it's, it's might go like that right all right Okay, so let's get into the third segment of today's video. Is other any other agreements or any other um, artifacts, right? Activity list is another type of uh, artifacts. One type of artifacts where that it talks about the tabulation of activities with this description, identifier, and uh, sufficient details of the description of the work. Okay, it it it, uh, it helps the project team to understand you know, what is the type of activity it is and what is the it is demanding it so that the team can execute that actually right the next type of other artifacts are bid documents right it can be a request for information request for proposal or request for quotation so request for proposal is a very famous where you know the government is looking for in a proposal from the uh, different vendor it vendors right So indefinitely, you know, and and sub and a buyer can go for a request for proposal from different suppliers, you know, get the quotation, you know, uh, do a better conferences, explain that, you know, and demand a 
request for request a proposal evaluate the proposal and choose a you know one or two vendors according to your terms and conditions the third one is the metrics where you know metrics report it can be of you know, uh, it talks about the different metrics available you know to be evaluated in a particular project right and then you know you can talk about you know schedule variances cost variances it can be a simple metric velocity in terms of agile right they talk about velocity sprint goal achievement so something like that it talks about you know the attribute which you are going to measure and how you are going to measure it what is the formula you are going to use it what are the mathematics you are going to use it right the fourth one is a project calendar is identifying the work days and the shift available for the schedule so it is helping you to uh do a project schedule for you right it will even tell you that you know who is available when and what are the working days and everything requirement documentation is one form of artifacts where you document the product requirements it provides the details on you know requirements management category and priority and acceptance criteria right so these in a in a predictive methods you know a requirements elicitation and requirement gathering is very important phase now it will tells you that you know how to record your what are the different stages like brd business requirement documentation you now and then srs software requirement specification so something like that it goes like that right and this has been uh, useful in maintaining your requirement uh, traceability matrix you know till your test cases as well right the next one is the project team charter right it is you know very very useful in agile methods where you establish the clear expectations on the accepted uh, accepted behavior shared it it talks about you know what are the different values agreements you know operating guidelines the way of working and everything it it might be useful in any any type of project but highly you know uh, i'm i'm seeing using that you know team team canvas is being used in agile methods right the final uh, artifact we're going to discuss is the user story user story is the one way of capturing the requirement as if user speaks for it we'll we'll see some of the examples of it right it is user story is coming from the extreme programming actually right so it is promising the conversation of between the product owner and the project team and it also promises an acceptance criteria right so with that you know we have come to the conclusion of all the artifacts we have discussed right this is an example of request for proposal right so and this is an example of the project calendar right and uh, this is an example of project team canvas where it talks about what is the mission goals and responsibilities strength and skills scope fun events weaknesses and risks values goals and norms right so these are the you can set up this project team charter canvas for your team and you can publicly available to your team members right fair enough Right, so this is a final one uh, example of user story. Right, as a this is a template of user story. This so example given here is as an account manager, I want a sales report for my account to be sent to my, my in my inbox daily, so that I can monitor the sales progress of my customer portfolio. Right, what is the acceptance criteria? The report is sent daily to my inbox. The report contains the following sales details the report is in csv format so this is a very simple example of user story it is you know as if an account manager talks about it right he he wants it so that he will uh, monitor the sales and the progress right so with that we have come to the conclusion of this particular video so almost i have walked through entire uh, pinbox 7 for you this is the final video on uh, pinbox 7 walk through hope you liked it the entire set of videos on pinbox 7 so we'll be going for we will be discussing you know i think one person wanted a detailed uh, solution on project management principles we'll i'll, I'll try to uh, put videos on that right and then i will be continuing my agile videos uh, uh, videos and agile series as well right uh, so thanks for your time thanks for listening my videos is quite wonderful uh and you know, it's, it's a good learning for my side as well right so hope you like it i'm looking for uh, uh i would like to resign from you on the improvements and you know uh improvement areas so that i can correct i can improve on my delivery style i can improve on my styles etc so thanks for your listening uh it has been a really good journey for me to to, to start and end on pinbox 7 you know uh, for my wonderful audience Thanks a lot. Bye bye.